first Peugeot 3008 was a mishmash between a people carrier and an SUV, with questionable styling but a spacious, family-friendly interior. The new model is much more definite. This is a 4x4 wannabe with bold looks, raised ride height and plenty of ground clearance. Don't think that this is an actual off-roader, though. Four-wheel drive is not available and while traction maximizing grip control, a system that adapts to the type of surface you're driving on, might help in some circumstances, this is a car designed very much for tarmac. Peugeot even goes as far as describing the 3008 as sporty. The 3008 faces a long list of established rivals that claim to offer the same recipe of a high driving position practical interior and affordable running costs. Leading the charge is the Nissan Qashqai, which has sat high up the UK bestsellers list for several years, with the boldly styled Kia Sportage and pricier VW Tig and gunning for the same customers. Other competition comes in the form of the just-launched Citatica, plus the sleek and affordable Renault Kadja and the front-toe drive Mazda CX-5. Where the 3008 bests or rivals, however, is in its ultra sharp styling and super simple interior, which features a shrunken steering wheel, with digital dials above and a driver canted center console complete with large touchscreen infotainment system. It's this unique style that should persuade buyers to head to their nearest Peugeot dealership. The 3008 really is an attention grabbing machine in the flesh. Managing to blend a high stance with boxy but dramatic lines. The 3008 makes most other compact SUVs look bland and old-fashioned. The interior only adds to the feel-good factor, with unusual fabrics, across the seats and the dashboard, and a strong sense of quality. This is important, considering the starting price only just sneaks below the £22,000 mark, with top-spec models likely to rise above £30,000. Engines range from a 130 horsepower turbocharged 1.2 litre and 100 horsepower 1.6 litre diesel, the former available in manual and automatic form, to a 165 horsepower 1.6 litre petrol and a 180 horsepower diesel, both only sold with an automatic gearbox. Emissions from all versions bar the most powerful petrol with mud and snow tires standard less than 130 gkm meaning affordable car tax. Specification levels vary from active to range topping GT. Basic active trim is likely to account for just a handful of sales, with well-equipped allure adding satin and sharper styling. GT line models gain a sportier look while top spec GT models, only available with the 180 horsepower diesel engine, come with Mercedes aping blackwood dashboard trim. GT Line and GT versions can also be specified with a two-tone black and grey coupe French finish, where the front two thirds of the car is silver, with the rear third being black. Unlike many SUVs, it's the cheapest model that make the most sense, as the automatic gearbox that's standard on the most potent petrol and diesel engines is frustratingly dim-witted and negates the benefit of the more powerful engines. One of the cheaper versions, however, makes for one of the best affordable SUVs currently on the market, offering strong performance with the potential of low fuel consumption. Keep reading our full packers review to find which Peugeot 3008 is the one to go for. Six engines are available in the 3008 with 100 horsepower to 180 horsepower. Fastest are the 180 horsepower diesel and 165 horsepower petrol which take a reasonably sprightly 8.9 seconds to accelerate to 62 miles per hour, while the 100 horsepower diesel requires a lengthy 13.1 seconds to amble to the benchmark speed. These figures are replicated with the top speeds varying from 109 miles per hour to 129 miles per hour the intralevel diesel and 2.0 litre 150 horsepower version come with manual gearboxes while 120 horsepower diesel and 130 horsepower models can be specified with a 6-speed automatic too. Meanwhile, range topping 165 horsepower petrol and 180 horsepower 3008 feature an automatic as standard. Despite the figures, it's the 130 horsepower petrol that feels the most responsive, 
as it features a manual gearbox rather than the power sapping automatic units fitted to the most powerful petrol and diesel versions. The 120 horsepower diesel also feels suitably nippy for this type of car. Though they have ample on paper power, the 165 horsepower petrol and 180 horsepower models feel lethargic on the road, with the slow door respond automatic gearboxes making overtaking maneuvers more stressful than their acceleration figures would suggest. Despite a third less power, the 120 horsepower diesel feels practically as fast as the 180 horsepower version, with a reasonably slick manual gearbox meaning that it remains easy to drive. The 130 horsepower petrol feels surprisingly quick too, responding well from low engine speeds and when worked harder. Though it may take 2 seconds longer than the 165 horsepower petrol to get to 62 miles per hour, you'd never guess this from behind the wheel. The engine is smooth and powerful and feels well suited to the car. The gearbox in our 130 horsepower test car was much stiffer than in the equivalent diesel, however. All things considered, bearing in mind that this is the cheapest model, it makes the most sense to those on a budget or those with more to spend, as long as you steer clear of the automatic.